Today, I'm going on a first run with the Insta360 1R. Seven point two zero miles, ten minutes, fourteen seconds per mile, one hundred and forty three beats per minute. Going for a windy, windy run commute home today. Uh, starting to feel some of that accumulated fatigue in my legs, getting the mileage back up as I recover from Houston and start getting ready for Boston today. Uh, taking with me the Insta three sixty one R. Now, before I get into my thoughts about this. 360 camera, I do want to go over some disclosures. Uh, this is a camera that I purchased with my own money. Uh, no one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to use this camera. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my 360 footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Insta360 1R. Now, what this is, is a modular camera. They're calling it interchangeable lens action camera, I think is what they've decided to call it now. And uh, it's something that I've been very excited about. Uh, from the moment it was announced, uh, I put my order in, it just happened to take forever. And the announce was a little bit weird. Uh, they had sent, I think, preview units to a lot of people who are, uh, I guess I didn't make that list, that's fine. But none of those people were allowed to show any footage from the camera for a really long time. Uh, so that was unusual. So I think that there were some initial problems and that may explain why it took so long for this camera to get to me. The other thing is there's some other things going on in China right now. I got an email from them recently uh, saying that I uh, the 360 selfie stick that I ordered, I ordered the carbon fiber one uh, just to test that one out because I haven't tried that one before. Uh, that one is on very long back order because they have to shut down their factories. Hopefully I'll be getting one of those soon. Hit the subscribe button to make sure that you get the chance to see that video when it comes out. But let's talk about this uh, 360 1R and the 360 mod. I don't know if they're calling them mods or attachments or what, but it attaches to the selfie stick with a GoPro mount, which is new before uh, they would just attach their 360 cameras with a quarter 20 mount. Um, but now they're going with the GoPro attachments, which makes sense because of the way that some of the other mods can potentially fit into this housing. Now what this housing is, it's a cage that reminds me a lot of some of the older GoPros and you take it out and you have lots of different little pieces. And what the pieces do is the bottom part is the battery, that part comes out, and then you have two detachable parts here. This is the 360 mod, and this is like the brains of the operation, plus it houses the SD card and it has a touchscreen monitor that lets you preview things. Now, if you have things like the Twin Edition where you get this also like standard or regular style of uh, lens, it's just one lens, not two, uh, that can attach to the camera as well. And you can even flip it over so it attaches so that way the screen is facing you if you're shooting it like in vlog mode so you can still see what's in there. So that's nice. Um, when you put all the pieces together, you can then, and they'll snap in, and you put it into this cage again. Once it's in the cage like this, uh, then the camera becomes waterproof. I think you could probably take it swimming. That's not normally how I use my cameras, but I do get them wet uh, somewhat regularly. So I'm very happy to see that they are waterproof now. And when it's like this, it is waterproof. And so you can get it definitely wet. That's an important development for me because the other previous favorite 360 camera that I have is Insta360 ONE X. I love this thing, but it's definitely not waterproof. And um, this is the third one that I'm on because these two I've killed because I just keep getting them wet 
on accident or not on accident, I'm kind of purposely going by water and not really caring if they get wet. The first one that I had lasted a long time that way. I was just really beating it up. The second one lasted like two months before it died from being wet. And uh, I took better care of this third one. This one is still alive. Um, so the fact that it's waterproof is a big improvement for me. Uh, I'm very happy to see that. Then when it's in this GoPro style housing, you could put it on the selfie stick of your choice. This is not the Insta360 selfie stick, but it does um, come with an attachment so that you could put it on the Insta360 selfie stick. Uh, I've broken all my Insta360 selfie sticks. They just don't last forever. Uh, and this is one that I got on Amazon. It's a 36 inch extendable selfie stick. I like it. Uh, for the most part, when I'm running with it, I will film the footage with it out. Sometimes I don't fully extend it and you can kind of choose how extended you want it. Um, but when I'm done, then I'll mostly hold it like this as I'm running. It's relatively heavy. It's heavier for sure than the Insta360 ONE X, but it's not prohibitively heavy. And it's about the same weight from what I can remember as some of uh, the Insta360 ONE R's competitors that are this shape. So. I'm gonna talk about my use case and how I use these a little bit more specifically uh, for those of you who are new to this channel. Uh, I film running footage, uh, a lot of it from races, from training, uh, this is a running channel. And the way that I do it is uh, I'm not shooting 360 footage to make a 360 video. Like you're not gonna be able to drag your finger to move around or use goggles to like look around different places. The way that I wanna use this is I wanna capture everything around me and then later after I'm done with the run, tell the camera like which parts of the scene to look at. And so I think in GoPro parlance, that's over capture, whatever you wanna call it. I'm using a 360 ca camera to get more data from which I can make a regular traditional like 2D video. I mean, even 360 video is still 2D because you're looking on the screen. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to do with it. Uh, one of the things that I love doing with my regular action cameras is shooting at high frame rates, at least 120 frames per second, so that I can then slow down that footage and make slow motion videos. You can still do that with this camera, which sets it apart from a lot of its competitors in that you can shoot up to 100 frames per second, which is fast enough to give me slow motion footage that I'm looking for. And the drawback of that is that it shoots at 3K. Now 3K seems like a lot, because normally the video that you're watching now, uh, the various resolutions that I've shot footage in, it's all being rendered out to 1920 by 1080, so 1K. This camera shoots at 3K at 100 frames per second, which sounds like a lot, but remember, there's two lenses here. So it's two cameras that are shooting all around and they're capturing 3K worth of pixels. And then I'm pick, picking out a smaller fraction of that. So the resolution's relatively low. I like the slow motion. I love the 360 camera's functionality and capabilities, but the image quality isn't always quite what I want it to be. And so what I'm also doing with this camera is shooting it at 5K, which is its max resolution. But at that max resolution, the camera can only capture 30 frames per second. So you're seeing that footage at real-time speed or regular speed. So those are the two ways that I'm gonna be using this particular camera. Uh, the other thing that I'll be doing with it is occasionally I'll talk to the camera, like I'll hold it out, maybe a little bit closer so the mic's closer to my mouth, and talk to it, because during a race or if I'm out somewhere, I wanna explain what I'm seeing like as you're running, then that's something that I can do and you can have footage like from the course or from the area that I'm running. Uh, and so sometimes the audio is important. For the most part, I just put music over my running footage and so I don't really need audio, but for certain situations like what I just described, or if I'm bringing this camera with me for a vlog day, maybe I'm exploring a new city, going somewhere new, or just showing you guys what I do like on an off day, like that's also when I might find uh, having the microphone to be useful because then I don't want to get a second camera out or worry about an external mic. I just want everything to be self-contained. Uh, so that's how I use the audio. Now I'll give you guys a quick audio sample in terms of what I got on this particular day. Keep in mind it was a pretty windy day, but here's here it is. Doing a little bit of an audio test with the Insta 360 One R on my way to be home at a very busy intersection. It's a little bit windy, tons of traffic going by, lots of it. Seeing how this does, I've got it right now set at 5K. 30 frames per second, that's how I'll shoot most of the footage for today. Although I personally like having the higher frame rate of the 3K or 100 frames per second. The image quality just isn't there. Uh, 
what I need, especially in like overcast conditions like this. So I'm gonna go with the 5K for today, try that out. We'll give it a shot and see how it does for the uh, rest of the month. really strong head with the entire time so it's gonna be a pretty challenging test for this camera I think we'll see and the other thing that's available as an option in the processing of this audio is that Insta Studio, the desktop app, has the ability to give you vocal enhancement so you can boost the vocal part of the track, uh, which in theory would be really useful for how I wanna use audio. And you also have the option for background noise removal. So if there's like a hump, like if you're in a room where the air conditioning was on, that kind of thing, uh, it can try to remove some of that stuff. I'll let you listen to those two as well. I've got it right now set at 5K, 30 frames per second. That's how I'll shoot most of the footage for today. But well, I personally like having the higher frame rate of the 3K or 100 frames per second. The image quality just isn't there. I've got it right now set at 5K, 30 frames per second. That's how I'll shoot most of the footage for today. But well, I personally like having the higher frame rate of the 3K or 100 frames per second. The image quality just isn't there. Now, I don't know if you could hear it, but for me, I hear just a lot of like digital artifact and digital distortion. And I didn't think it was all that successful either with vocal enhance or background noise with some of the difficult like torture conditions that I threw at it today in terms of trying to run and talk next to a highway on a windy day. So it was some of the tougher conditions from an audio perspective, but I just think the regular mode probably worked best. And the only audio processing that I usually ever do or know how to do is just increase or decrease the levels in post-processing. So as I'm editing the video, I can make it louder or softer. That's pretty much all I ever do. Uh, I use Final Cut. Final Cut has some like kind of filters or things that you can run the audio clip through to do the same things like vocal enhance, removing hum, lots of other effects. I don't usually use those because I just tend to find that the kinds of audio that I throw at Final Cut don't really respond well to it, like GoPro footage and into 361R footage. So I just kind of leave it and make it a little bit louder and hopefully the wind isn't too bad that I can still use it. Now in camera, you do have the option of turning on or off the wind rejection. And for these clips, I did have the wind rejection turned on. So that's my use case for this camera. Um, from what I've seen, I'm really happy with the 5K footage. I think the image quality looks great. Uh, I'm very happy with the stitching, the overall quality of the 360 images that I'm able to get. From 3K, I'm really happy with those as well. Uh, overcast kind of kind of dark days are a real challenge for 360 cameras. They really like to have a lot of light. And so I felt like it handled itself pretty well today. I was, it was better than I was expecting, uh, but it's still just not quite as sharp as when I have like a GoPro pointing at my feet than when I have this like low and then I made it look at my feet. So there's definitely like a, an image quality trade-off that I'm, I'm choosing whenever I'm choosing to use the Insta360 camera. So, but um, in terms of the flexibility and the types of like grand movements it can give me and the fact that the stick disappears, I just think that that is uh, a trade-off that I'm not sure I'll make every day because uh, of other factors that I'll talk about in a minute. But it's something that every once in a while I think is just a, a really nice tool to have in my arsenal. Now, in terms of the overall experience using this as I'm running, I talked a little about how I run with it and like how I extend the stick. For the most part, I just crank this as tight as I can to make sure that this is as straight as possible. If it's not straight, if this is like a little bit skewed, it's gonna mess up like it's attempt, you'll see this part of the stick. It's gonna look a little bit weird. Um, so you have to make sure that this is like uh, as straight and vertically aligned as possible. So you keep that cranked. Uh, but then to turn it on, there are buttons at the top, one to power on and one to start recording. And you have a nice preview screen that you can preview what you're looking at. And you can even kind of frame, even if you're using the 360 mod, you can still frame your shot a little bit by dragging around on the screen to look at different parts of what the two lenses, either one of them is capturing. And also does stitching. So it's not just like you tap and you see this camera or you tap and you see that camera. You can very fluidly stitch or move around and it's all like stitched in real time for you, which I think is 
pretty impressive. Now, overall, the screen is pretty small. So when I'm running with it and it's like 36 inches away from me, plus an arm's length away, uh, I'm not really gonna see it, but it's nice to see it because then I know it's on and I could see that it's recording. Like there's the re little recording icon that appears that's nice and visible. So I can see that to make sure it is recording, uh, even though it's further away from me. So I can see that. That I think is great. The other thing that's nice about it is because it's touch, I can switch between the two shooting modes that I would use, like the 3K100 and the 5K30. Uh, so that's nice to be able to do. In previous cameras and other cameras that I've worked with, like the Insta360 ONE X, for example, there's only like one button that you use to get through all the menus and trying to change those kinds of settings, like in the middle of a run while I'm running was just so like annoying, it was prohibitively annoying. So I never did it. Uh, this, I can actually like change the settings. It's tedious, it takes a long time. I wish there was some way of shortcutting or programming some of these buttons to record in one of the two ways, but it's manageable. I was able to do it on this run, for example. So that's doable. But the other thing to keep in mind is while the touchscreen is nice, uh, and I'm not gonna advocate for a bigger touch screen because I'd rather save weight than have a bigger touch screen, but it is small and I am running when I'm trying to hit these buttons and a lot of times I'm hitting the wrong button. Maybe with some muscle memory and some practice getting used to this a little bit more, that will be less of a problem, but it's certainly something that happens is like I'm finding that I'm accidentally hitting the wrong button and then the interface isn't the most intuitive a lot of the time and so it's hard to figure out how do I get back to the last screen and get to the correct thing that I wanted to get to. So a little bit of difficulty there. Hopefully that will iron itself out, but it is a small touch screen. I do have relatively smaller hands. So if you have like regular size hands or bigger hands, this might be really frustrating for you to work with. But um, overall, uh, even though it is a little bit heavier, uh, it wasn't like prohibitively he heavy. It wasn't as heavy as running with the Insta360 ONE X in the dive case or the waterproof case. So um, acceptably light or acceptably heavy, however you want to look at it. Uh, something that I could definitely run most of my runs with uh, in something like this. So definitely enjoying the Insta360 ONE R in terms of the running and capturing experience. Now, in terms of editing it, there's two ways that I'm gonna be working with this footage on the camera and getting it off the camera and in a place where people can see it. One way is by getting it from the camera directly to my phone, maybe editing like a quick short clip, 15 to seconds to like a minute long and putting that up on social media or grabbing a screen grab and using that as uh, an image to put on Strava or on Instagram in my feed. Those are kind of the two ways that I might use it um, from camera to social media directly really quick. But the main thing that I'll be doing with this is getting the images off the camera and putting them onto my laptop so I can edit it. And for that, I'm using the desktop app. The, it's the same one that you use for the Insta360 Go, ONE X, and the ONE R, which is the Insta Studio desktop app. And they haven't made any changes as far as I can tell to that. And so all the things that I'm used to doing, my keyboard shortcuts, my muscle memory of how I'm able to move quickly in that app, are still all usable there. And so I'm very happy with that. I'm able to get the shots that I need uh, from the 360 files into 1080 files relatively quickly. It's one of the fastest, easiest workflows that I've ever seen in terms of dealing with different 360 types of files. So very happy that they haven't made really any changes to that workflow at all because it works for me. It still takes a lot of time though, and this kind of leads me to my overall thoughts on 360 cameras and this 360 camera in particular. I really enjoy working with the Insta360 ONE R camera. I'm gonna be filming a lot more with it. Something that I won't use every day though, and that's because of the extra work it takes. Normally with an action camera like a GoPro, you film it and then you edit it. This has an intermediate step of filming it, then I have to edit it so that way I can show you what I want you guys to see, and then I edit it again in the overall video. That intermediary step can take a while, especially if you're new at it. I like to think that I'm relatively fast at it, but it does add time, so it's not something I could do for like uh, an almost daily video production schedule. 
if I were doing this full time, I probably could, but I'm not doing this full time. I still have like a regular job, I have a family, I still have to run. So like there's a lot of other stuff that I think in terms of my work-life balance, I don't wanna use this every day. But I think there's something I can certainly use regularly because the workflow is so fast and efficient for the way that I understand like what I'm trying to do and where I'm trying to go with it. So uh, I think the overall way that they've thought it out is very doable and this is um, something that I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time with and really figuring out what are the intricate nuances of this camera and pushing it to see what's the most that I can get out of it. So very much looking forward to that. Uh, if you have any questions about the Insta 361R or about 360 cameras in general, feel free to leave in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys about it a little bit more down there. And before I go, I'll remind you guys about the charity runner for this week. This week, it's Jason Savageau who's running the Boston Marathon and raising money for the Massachusetts Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Now, I announced him as the charity runner of the week earlier this week. I donated $70 of my own money to his fundraising efforts. And since then, you guys have followed suit and have been donating your hard earned money as well. Yesterday, I recognized a bunch of you had already donated and helped out in raising money for MAVV. And even just since yesterday, an additional $150 has been donated. And so I just wanna take a second to recognize those of you who donated just since yesterday as well. Chris with the hashtag Team Kofuzi, Alex Propes, Jay, Pivo coming in with $50. That's amazing. That is so much money. Thank you very much. We got Alpi. We got a non elite runner in here. Mallory Holtzauer, a Kofuzi fan. Run JLC, Steven, and Michael Mansfield. Thank you guys so much for following suit and joining in and supporting one of your fellow runners. Uh, that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?